Our Lord appears in the upper room on that first Easter, and his first words are, Peace be with you. And he repeats them, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. He wanted his followers to have that peace such as the world cannot give, that only God can give. And immediately afterwards, he gives us, as it were, the sacrament of peace. Receive the Holy Spirit, the spirit of love, the spirit of joy, the gift of God. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. As Jesus first gift to the church on being in the presence of the apostles. He gives them that great sacrament of mercy, which is the sacrament of penance. So little used in so many places today. And this is sad. And many people ask, why did he give us a sacrament? Why did we need to live that outward sign? Go to a priest to have our sins forgiven. Can we confess directly to the Father? We can. We should. Every time we sin, to come back before this God of mercy, this God of love, and say what the prodigal son said, Father, I, am, I have sinned against heaven and against you. But Jesus knew that we needed more than that. He knew us. He was fully man. He knew that there were aspects of human nature that called out for a sacrament. Amongst them, the need to tell someone what we have done, the good things we are dying to share with others, the good news, the experiences of life. And we have to be convinced of this, because it is true too. We have a need to share with others our misdeeds. A man who has done something wrong will tell his mates at the pub he's got to tell someone. I personally saw this many years ago when a non-Catholic woman came to me and she said, Father, I'm not a Catholic, but I think it was 20 years ago, I did something very wrong. And I've never told anyone. Can I tell you? And she told me. It exemplified for me that deep-seated need we all have of telling someone. We get that load off our chest, even in a human way. I couldn't forgive that woman her sins. She was not a Catholic, but I asked in a prayer for God to forgive her. And I gave her a blessing, and I am sure she went away uplifted by that sacrament as she was able to live it, of at least telling someone what she had done. And then, too, there is a deep-seated need to know that we are forgiven. And we can confess our sins to the Father, but we don't hear anything. And we might ask, Am I really sorry? Am I determined not to do this again? And we don't really know. We have that experience humanly too. Let us say we have offended somebody by insulting them. And we're not sorry at the beginning, but later we are. We go and we say, look, I'm really sorry for what I said yesterday. Please forgive me. And supposing they just say, 
and they go away with a stern face. We're not happy. We need to know that they have forgiven us. We not need to hear it. And so Jesus instituted a sacrament, an outward sign for forgiveness. And we know he was implying in the words of institution that the priest would have to hear the confession and make a judgment because he said, for those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. The priest would have to listen to the sins, then make that judgment. Can I forgive? Which, of course, practically all the time he can. Or perhaps in occasions, for the time being at least, he cannot. He has to hear the sins. And that sacrament does us so much good. We receive so many blessings when we go to confession. To begin with sanctifying grace, which all the sacraments give. This grace that makes us saints. If it were only for this, that we went to confession regularly, simply to receive the sanctifying grace, it would be very well done. Pope John Paul II, in an address to priests hearing confessions in the Roman Basilicas in Lent of 1981, encouraged them to encourage others to frequent confession, which, he said, has always accompanied the ascent to holiness in the church. Those who go to confession more often grow more quickly in sanctity, through that sanctifying grace. And then, too, the more often we go to confession, the more sensitive our soul becomes. And we, we grow in love. And when we have offended our Lord in smaller things, we are eager to go back and ask for his forgiveness. I am a priest of Opus Dei, as you may know. And I lived, I had the blessing of living for two years with St. Josemaria in the early 1960s. And he told us on more than one occasion that he went to confession sometimes more than once a week. He says, I'm not scrupulous. But he had that desire to purify his soul of having offended his loving God in some small matter. We receive not only sanctifying grace, but sacramental grace that particular grace of each sacrament that helps us to live the purpose of the sacrament, and in particular with confession. When we have confessed certain sins, we receive especially the graces of God to avoid those particular sins. And we find afterwards that we generally are a little bit better. We're less impatient, less angry, less lazy or self-indulgent or whatever. We receive, of course, forgiveness of our sins. We hear those words, I absolve you from your sins. We needed to hear that. The priest has judged, and we go out knowing that what has been loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. We exercise humility. It takes sometimes courage and humility to go before a fellow human being we're going before God, but through the ministry of the priest, and to tell sins that we are ashamed of. But what an exercise of humility, and what growth in humility comes through doing that. And an exercise of sincerity. You know, if we say, Heavenly Father, I have sinned before, before you, and before God, and before you, we can be very vague. But when we go to confession, we have to examine our conscience, be very specific. This is what I'm confessing. And we express that sincerity at the same time as we get to know ourselves better in that examination of conscience. And often the priest will engage us for a short time with some words of advice, clarification of some doubt of conscience, a personal encounter with Jesus Christ through the priest. And that spiritual direction, which may be only a few minutes and sometimes is quite a bit longer, 
is very helpful for our spiritual growth. And finally, we always leave that sacrament with that uplifting joy, that peace of knowing that now our soul is clean. Now we begin again. And so often our spiritual life increases in pace after a good confession. Our soul is clean. We want to keep it that way. We struggle harder with all of the grace that the sacrament gives us. Let us make frequent use of this great sacrament of joy, this great sacrament of mercy, and let us help others who have not been to come back, as Pope John Paul II said so eloquently in Randwick in 1986, come back. Occupy that place that only you can fulfill. Come home. And often they need someone to help them. Just in the last few weeks, having preached on this sacrament in the recollections that I give in Sydney, and encouraging those people to bring others, one particular woman had already been living this, and she told me later that in the following weeks, she took back to confession two, I think it was relatives, two women who had not been practicing the faith at all for over 20 years. And the 17-year-old son of one of them, whose life had become completely mixed up, who hadn't been to confession since his first confession and first communion, plus another woman that had been only a few years and who was practicing. And she gave those people a truly happy Easter. There can be no happier Easter than being in the grace of God, sharing in the joy of the risen Christ in a spiritual way. And last year, I was visiting an older man in hospital who had broken his hip. He was in a ward with four beds, two of which were occupied by elderly women. And he was wondering, why do they put me in a mixed ward? Well, I took him communion, and while I was there, the daughter of one of those elderly women said, Father, could you say a few words to my mother? She's blind, but she can't, she can see you. She can't see you, but she can hear you. And so I went and spoke a few words to her, and she was in her 90s. And she had not been to the sacraments since she got married. And I asked, is your husband still alive? They got married outside the church. And she said, yeah, he died some years ago. And I said, would you like to receive the sacraments again? And she said, oh, I don't think I'm worthy. And I said, well, we'll make you worthy. And the following day, I went back. And I spoke with her and disposed her for confession and gave her communion. And afterwards, with tears of joy, running down her cheeks. She explained she had not been to one of those sacraments, probably confession, since she got married outside the church, and it was some 70 years before, and the other sacrament, probably her first communion, since she had been confirmed maybe 80 years before. Well, what joy we can bring to others if we use this sacrament, if we love this sacrament, appreciate it and help others to appreciate it. We're on the eve of the Feast of the Divine Mercy and not for nothing do these same readings that the church has always had become the readings for that new feast instituted by John Paul II because Christ gives us here that great sacrament of mercy and we ask Our Lady, Mother of Mercy, help us to come back to that sacrament and to help many others to do so. The spirit of love, the spirit of joy, the gift of God. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. As Jesus' first gift to the church, 
on being in the presence of the apostles. He gives them that great sacrament of mercy, which is the sacrament of penance. So little used in so many places today. And this is sad. And many people ask, why did he give up? Our Lord appears in the upper room on that first Easter, and his first words are, peace be with you. And he repeats them, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. He wants a sacrament. Why did we need to live that outward sign? Go to a priest to have our sins forgiven. Can we confess directly to the Father? We can. We should. Every time we sin, to come back before this God of mercy, this God of did his followers to have that peace, such as the world cannot give that only God can give. And immediately afterwards, he gives us, as it were, the sacrament of peace. Receive the Holy Spirit